Now let us move to the different types of motion that the rise the follower would exhibit during the rise and the return. The dual is just you know like dual. It means that it's gonna be stationary. There is no velocity. There is no acceleration. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna give you the displacement in a written description, and based on this description, you have to convert it into graph. So. This description, we give a name, or there are some specific names to the different types of motion that the follower will exhibit, like, like for example, the uniform velocity motion. So you should understand what does it mean, uniform velocity motion, and how you draw uh, or graph this type of motion and the specifications of this type of motion as well. So I'm gonna, in this video, I'm gonna show you these different types of the follower motion, and this is the topic, the next topic that we are going to discuss, the different types of the follower motion. We do have uniform velocity motion, and we do have simple harmonic motion, we do have parabolic motion, or, or commonly known as constant acceleration motion, and the simple harmonic motion, and so on. So all of these different motions, for example, if I, if I told you that the, the follower is going to rise, within 180 degree, the first 180 degree with a simple harmonic motion, you have to know how you can graph a simple harmonic motion. There is a specific procedure of graphing or drawing a simple harmonic motion. This is what I'm going to, I'm going to discuss these different methods in the next video. How I'm going to show you how we can draw a simple harmonic motion, how we can draw uh, parabolic motion or constant acceleration motion. As you can see, this curve is different. This curve here, it is different than this one. And there is a specific procedure of graphing these uh, parabolic functions or simple harmonic motions, right? So this is what we are going to discuss the next video. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go over these different types of motions and I'm going to explain to you the different specifications in terms of displacement, velocity, and acceleration of these different types of motion that shall be covered or considered here. So it, it, the procedure, it works in this way, that I'm going to give you the problem with a written description that during the rise, for example, I'm going to tell you that during the rise, the follower it should uh, should be rising with a uniform or moving with a uniform velocity motion or with a simple harmonic motion or whatever. So you have to convert this type of motion into graph. This is what, as I mentioned, I'm going to explain to you how we can do it in the next video. But now I'm just, we just going to discuss these different types of motions and their, the difference between them in addition their specifications, right? The first type of motion is uniform velocity motion. Like, for example, we may have the scan mechanism, as we usual. This is the cam mechanism, the main one that we're going to consider here, that we do have the cam, and that is pivoted, and then we're going to have the follower. Whatever it is, in line or offset, these kind of details, we're going to consider them when we discuss the uh, cam profile. So, and this cam is going to rotate as we agree, 360 degrees. This is the angle of rotation. It will be rotating with an angle of rotation theta and angular velocity of rotation, which is omega and angular acceleration as alpha, right? These are the specification of rotation of the cam. And uh, in accordance, the, the, follower is uh, the follower is going to move up and down with a y, which is refers to the rise and V velocity of rise and acceleration because it's doing translation motion. This is the thing that we're gonna consider here. We're gonna consider that you have a rotating cam and the follower is gonna is going to do translation and motion. So to describe, to fully describe the translation motion as we knew from even the dynamic class, like the follower it should be moving or the rise of the follower is just y, the velocity is just v, and it stands for the acceleration of this follower, right? So if the follower is going to move up during the rise with a uniform velocity motion, uniform velocity, it means that you do have constant velocity. The velocity is just constant value, right? And this is, this is going to be the shape. This is the thing that you have to draw, especially within the rise. This is the rise period, like the description of this graph that the follower is going to rise with a constant or a uniform velocity motion. Then it's going to double for... 90 degrees, then it's going to return with also uniform velocity motion. 
and the representation of the uniform velocity motion in the displacement diagram is, will be seen like a straight line, linear function, and they do it just horizontal function, and then you're gonna have a linear function. And this makes sense. So this is the shape of the uniform velocity motion, and I'm, we're gonna discuss how we can draw this one graphically. But let us discuss here the specifications of this type of motion. So first of all, we do have the velocity, V, it should be constant of this type of motion. And as we knew from the dynamic class that V, the velocity, it should be the change of the displacement with respect to the time. We already given here the displacement, the vertical displacement of the follower as Y, right? So Y stands for the time change or the, this is the Y axis. This should be the theta axis of the displacement. So this is the displacement diagram that I'm talking about, right? So we are interested in finding how much is y as a function of theta. Theta, again, this is the angle of rotation of the cam itself. So since the velocity should be constant, this constant value should equal to dy by dt, where t stands for the time. This is what we knew from the dynamic class, and this value should be constant anyway. So if I ask you to find a value for y, you have to do integration, or in other words, we can do like cross multiplication. So we're gonna end up with dy, if we did the cross multiplication equal to v times dt, right? Then we're gonna apply some integration to both terms. This integration is gonna be from zero to t, and this integration is gonna be from zero to y, because we are interested after a specific seconds of rotation of the cam, where it should be, this is the location of the follower after a time t. If we did the integration, we're gonna end up, the left-hand side will be simply y, because we're already doing integration with respect to y. This one is gonna be v is constant, right? The, it is uniform velocity or constant velocity type of motion, so v will be moved outside the integration. Doing the integration, this is gonna give us t, right? So this is gonna be the y or the rise or the descent, the rise or the return or the y location or the displacement of the follower as a function of time as a function of time in terms of the velocity of the follower. This is also the velocity of the follower. So this is V and this is the displacement. This is the displacement of the follower and this is the velocity and both are for the follower. And definitely T stands for the time. So, but as you can see, we are interested in representing the displacement as a function of theta, where theta should be the angle of rotation of the cam. So how we can, it means that we are not interested in y as a function of t, but we are interested in y as a function of theta. So I have to replace this time t with a theta, or find the relation between time t and theta. This could be happen because definitely the velocity, it should be dependent on the angular velocity of rotation of the cam itself. So even from the dynamic class, we knew that the omega, which is the angular velocity of rotation of the cam, it should equal to the d theta by dt, right? Where theta should be the angle or the angular displacement. This is the angular velocity, this is the angular displacement, this is the angular acceleration of the cam from the dynamics, right? Or even definitely from this course. So d theta by dt, which is the angle of rotation, of the cam, but this angle, it should be like a function of time because the angle of rotation, this cam is rotating, it means that all the time we're gonna attain another angle of rotation. So that's why it is a function of time. So if we did cross multiplication, so we're gonna end up with dt equals d theta by omega, divided by omega. And if we did the time integral or the integration to both sides, this is from zero to t, so the integration limit or the integration is over, T, but here we are doing integration from zero to theta, where this is the angle of rotation again of the of the cam itself. Doing the integration, we're gonna end up on the left hand side as t. The right hand side is gonna be uh, one over omega, which, which should be theta over omega directly, right? So this is the time as a function of omega, which is, again this omega. This is the angular velocity of the cam and it should be given since we are interested in the cam profile and this is the angular displacement this is the angular displacement or the angle kind of of the cam 
And again, this is simply the time. So if we plug, if we substitute this time into this equation, we shall end up with this result here, right? So substituting, we're gonna end up with y as a function of theta, and this is what we would like to express here. This graph represents, this displacement diagram represents y as a function of theta. It's going to be, <coughs> v is just constant, t is gonna be theta over omega. So this is how we are going to represent, this is the mathematical thing, this is the equation in terms of analytical method. But in terms of graph, I'm gonna show you how we can blot this thing or this line that represents the uniform velocity of the motion of the follower. As you can see, this function is a linear function. It means that y, v is constant, omega will be number, just number, whatever it is, a function of theta or a function of time or whatever. But definitely, since we are talking about constant velocity of the follower, this by default required this omega should be constant, right? This omega, it should be constant to achieve a constant value as a function of theta of this y, right? But forget about these details for now. This is a linear function. This is linear function. So that's why in the displacement diagram, in the displacement diagram, the movement or the rise or even the return, because the rise here it is uniform motion, the return also it is uniform motion, the rise it should be a linear function. But how about the velocity it should be constant function? As you can see, it is constant function. Here it is constant. Here there is no velocity. The velocity with the dual period it is zero. Why? Because there is no movement. The it means that this, according to this motion, the follower is gonna keep rising up with a constant velocity. There is gonna dual or stop for a while. Then it's gonna return back again with the same velocity moving down over this period because this time of period there is 90 degree here. We also have the 90 degree. So it's gonna move down with the same velocity, which is constant as well, till then it's gonna do will stop for a while, then it's gonna push up again and repeat the cycle. So it means that it's gonna move up, do or stop, and then move down and stop, then move up and stop and keep repeating. So this cycle, which is moving up, stop, moving down and stop, this is one complete cycle. Within this cycle, it moves up and down with a constant velocity. With the displacement can be analytically represented using this equation and graphically should be represented in this way. So if this is the, this, if this is the displacement in terms of theta as a function of theta, can we find the velocity equation, the velocity v. So simply, if you did cross multiplication, we're gonna end up that v equals y times omega over theta. And again, this value should be constant. So if I ask you how much is the maximum velocity that can this riser attain, it should be the same velocity because it moves with the same velocity, right? So that's why v equals v maximum, which is y over, times omega over theta. Where, for example, what is theta again and y? Simply, if you just at any angle theta, if you just move up and intersect with the line, you're gonna end up with the corresponding value of y. So there is a special theta, which is this one, with this angle theta. If you just move up here, we're gonna end up with the point B and the displacement that corresponds to point B, this is gonna be the maximum displacement, right? This is gonna be the y maximum that this is the maximum height and the maximum descent that the riser can exhibit or do while the cam is rotating through the uh, 360 degrees. This maximum height, we're gonna give it a name as L, which we're gonna name it as lift. So what is the lift? This is the maximum height or the maximum descent that the follower can do during the uh, one complete cycle of rotation of the cam. The corresponding value or the value of theta, the value of theta, the angle theta, that bring the, the follower to the maximum height, to the left, we're gonna give it a name as beta. So G, these just special names, but you should understand that beta simply just angle like any other angle theta, L like Y, but y, L, this is like the maximum Y. You could consider that this L, this L, it is the maximum Y. This is like Y maximum. The same thing, this beta, this is like theta, that at y equals l. You got my point? So this is basically, we're gonna, because we're gonna need this l and beta. So simply in this case, 
Beta, in this case, it is pi over 2. And remember that any angle without the cosine or the sine, the trigonometry it should be in radian. This angle, it should be in the radian. So, for example, in this case, beta, it should be 90, and the lift is going to be this maximum height, whatever it is. It should be given as a number, right? So, if we decided to spread this V in terms of the beta and the lift, it's going to be the same. Just theta is going to be beta and L is going to be like Y maximum. So, and definitely it's going, it's going to be constant. Uh, v, the velocity. So this is going to give us Y. It's going to be the lift times omega over beta. But you should understand that this is the instantaneous displacement or location of the floor. And this is the instantaneous angle or the location of the floor at angle theta. And this is the corresponding velocity, which it should be constant. But this one and this one, this is the lift, which again, this is the maximum height that can the floor attain. And Peter, this is the corresponding angle that would achieve this lift. So this is the angle of the cam, of the cam corresponding to, bond to the lift. All right, so these are the specifications of the, in terms of the displacement. As you can see, the velocity is gonna be constant and this velocity should be the, with, as we already got it up there, like this is the expression for the, this constant velocity, right? And within the rise and the return. And you should under, understand something here that it is not necessary. We may rise with the uniform velocity motion and we may return with another motion. This depends on our design and our predetermined specification of the follower itself. But again, I won't gonna explain through this video how we can graphically represent these uniform velocity motion, which what seems very simple because simply you're just gonna connect with the line, but I'm gonna give you the procedure in the next video. Here we just interested in, in this specification, the relation between the displacement and the velocity and the acceleration. So how about the acceleration? Since the velocity it is zero, I'm sorry, it's constant, by definition, the acceleration it should be zero. So by default, since we do have this one, it's constant, so the acceleration is gonna be zero. This is one of the specifications of the uh, of this type of motion. So that's why the acceleration here it is zero. The acceleration within the return it is zero. As you can see within the dot, the acceleration it tends to infinity. How? One would say that that will it mean that we're already standing stationary. There is no motion, so it doesn't make sense to talk about velocity and acceleration. And this is what we already seeing here that the velocity within this period is already zero. So why the acceleration, it tends to infinity, it should be zero as well. What does it mean the acceleration tends to infinity within the dual? The acceleration, you should understand that the acceleration, this is the change in the velocity of the object. How fast you could, you can read the acceleration or is, is how fast you are going to change the velocity of the object. As you can see in the velocity diagram, we already having here very high velocity. Then suddenly, exactly at the 90 degree, it will be suddenly changed, instantaneously changed, very fast, from high value to zero value. This it means that the, uh, we do have abrupt change in the velocity, a sudden change in the velocity. This is like you're already hammering over the object. Kind of, right? Like you're already moving very fast with the forward, then you're gonna stop suddenly at the instant. The, so we do have a sudden change in the velocity from a high value to zero value. This indicates that we do have a very huge value of the acceleration. So that's why we do have here the acceleration. This explain what does it mean the acceleration tends to infinity. The acceleration, it means the, the rate of a change in the velocity of the object. So if we are going to change the velocity very fast, it means that we do have high acceleration. But if we are going to change the velocity of the object slowly, at a long period of time, it means that the acceleration is gonna be zero. So a zero acceleration, 
it may indicate that we are not going to do change in the velocity, but definitely we have to change the velocity to stop the, 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 the follower. Other than that, it's going to keep moving forward, right? So the follower, the follower is going to keep moving up, then it will suddenly stop. So that's why the acceleration tends to infinity. Then it's going to switch the direction moving back again. So it's going to be zero, standing, standing, standing. Then suddenly it's going to move with an attain a very high velocity. So that's why on the other side as well, we do have a, an infinity acceleration. The same thing happens when we switch from this return to the next door, right? So this, that's why this is one of the problems of these types of uniform velocity motion that it will give us acceleration or which will result in an abrupt change in the direction and the velocity of the object suddenly that would, in terms of the function of this mechanism, it will result in some source of vibration in the machine and it is not preferred in many of machines that you do have vibration. In addition, it will break down the uh, at in case that the acceleration is going to be high because the acceleration tends to infinity and this acceleration will result in some huge inertia force that basically depends on the mass of this follower. So if this follower is with a huge mass, it means that you already we're going to end up with a very high force, uh, inertia force. As you know, the inertia force is going to be the mass times the acceleration. So we do have this acceleration tends to infinity. So this force, inertia force, is going as well to tend to infinity, indicating that this follower kind of pushed very hard with a very high force due to the change in the velocity, which is not preferred in many of the machines. So that's why this type of motion, it is avoidable kind of, like we have to avoid using this one. And that's why we do have a modified uniform velocity motion. And this is the thing that we're already going to consider here as a one type of motion to get rid of this problem of the infinity acceleration, as I'm going to explain after a while. Make sense? All right. So now let us move to the second type of motion of the follower, which is the parabolic motion or commonly known as the constant acceleration. In the previous motion, we wanted to achieve a constant velocity or movement of this follower while it moves with a constant velocity. But how about if we are interested in having the motion of this follower with a constant acceleration? In some cases, we may would like to attain a constant acceleration or deceleration of the follower. So this is should be achieved through a parabolic motion. And as I'm going to show you. So anyway, since we do have the condition just to do analysis to this one, this is going to be the shape. And again, as I mentioned, I'm going to explain to you how we can draw. Like within this rise period, this is the beta, as we agree, we're going to give to the total rise period as beta r or beta rise. And we do have another beta for the descent or the return. And this is the downward period, right? This is going to be the rise period of this one, this is the rise, and this is gonna be the return period, right? This is the return. And this definitely is gonna be the total lift, which is gonna be L. But at any point, at any point here, belong to this curve or the other curve, you're gonna find theta and the corresponding value just Y. So the condition is, the main condition of this type of motion that the acceleration, it should be constant. This is the main condition. So from this, we knew from the dynamics that the acceleration should be dv by dt, right? And it should be constant. So if we did cross multiplication, we can find the velocity as dv. It's going to be the acceleration time dt. Then we're going to do the integration to both sides from 0 to t and this one from 0 to v, right? where at any instant time of zero, there should be any, uh, there shouldn't be any velocity for the follower. This is the initial condition, you could say. So uh, doing the integration, we're going to end up with V, the velocity on the left-hand side. This one, A is constant, so we can move this one outside the integration, just a constant, and this is going to give us T. So this is the velocity as a function of time. As you can see, the velocity should be linear function in terms of the time. But how about the, and again, the acceleration is a constant acceleration. How about the y, the displacement? We knew that the v, it is dy by dt. So doing cross multiplication, we're going to end up with the dy equals v dt. 
And if we did, again, the integration to both sides from 0 to t and 0 to y, we're at instant 0. There should, there shouldn't be any displacement or movement of the follower. It means that y0 should be 0. Doing the integration, the left-hand side, it should be y. The right-hand side should be the integration from 0 to t to v, which we already got it in terms of the acceleration as at dt. Doing the integration is going to give us at squared over 2. Make sense? So we got the y, which is the displacement of the follower, but as a function of the time. Now we have to get rid of the time because we are interested in y as a function of theta, as usual. This should be the angle theta here, right? And the vertical, it should be the y-axis. So how much is y in terms of theta? So we have to get rid of the time. So I have to work over the time. For this type of application, basically, in many of the cases, it is preferred to have the velocity, the angular velocity of rotation of the cam to be constant. Why? Because generally speaking, in terms of machine applications, any one of these components, these are two different components within the machine, right? Any component that do have acceleration will result in some vibration in the machine. Like, for example, if you have a cam mechanism within your engine or you within your car. So this cam mechanism, if one of the components that you do ha it has acceleration, this will result in some inertia force, and this inertia force will result in some shaking and vibration in this engine or this machine. And vibration, it is a serious problem. We would like to avoid any source of vibration as much as we can in the machine things. So that's why a common property of this cam mechanism that the cam, it is with a constant velocity. Why? To attain a constant acceleration of the cam. But, so, uh, I'm, I, I'm sorry, to attain a zero acceleration for the cam. So the cam will be zero with zero acceleration. It means that there is no any source of vibration that would come through the cam, but the follower, it would with an acceleration because this depends on the design or the thing that we would like to achieve. For example, for the follower here, we would like to achieve a constant acceleration for the follower. It means that there is an inertia force of the follower and there is a vibration that would result because of the follower. But since we already control, we can control the type of motion, the velocity and the change in the velocity and the speed of, through, of the follower through the profile of the cam, there is no need, there is no need to give an acceleration or control the acceleration of the follower by an acceleration to the cam. You got my point? Like if, if we would like to control the acceleration of the follower, we can control the acceleration or give a certain acceleration to the follower by changing the profile of the cam only and keeping its velocity constant. So that's why for most of these cam mechanisms, the velocity it is constant of the cam, but the velocity and the acceleration of the follower, it would be anything depending on the profile. We would like to come up with the profile for a, for a cam that rotates with a constant velocity, which should be its profile to give a specific velocity, displacement, and acceleration to the follower. This is what we are going to do. So that's why in many of the cases, the velocity of the cam is going to be constant. And this is what we're going to assume or consider here, because this is a common thing. We would like to get rid of the vibration sources or reasons or the sources of vibration within the mechanism or the machine as much as we can. So that's why it doesn't make sense to us or it is not necessarily needed to give a, 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 an acceleration to the cam, just keep the acceleration of the cam zero to minimize the source of the vibration as much as we can. And just we can control the acceleration, the velocity of the follower through the cam profile itself. Okay, this is what usually happens in many of the cases, but for that's why for this case, we would like to achieve a constant acceleration. And by the way, if you can investigate the acceleration, this won't gonna happen unless you do have a constant angular velocity and the angular acceleration is, it should be zero in this case. So going back here, since we do have omega is a constant value. So omega, which is the angular velocity, of the follower, of the cam, this is for the cam, it is constant as well as we discussed. 
This is the angular velocity of the cam. And we knew from dynamics that omega, which is the angular velocity, should be d theta by dt, where theta should be the angular displacement, which should be the angular displacement of the cam itself, right? So if we did cross multiplications, we're going to end up with the d theta equals uh, or dt, because we are interested in the time. We would like to get rid of the time. So dt is going to be the d theta over omega. And if we did the integration to both sides, from zero to theta, from zero to t, as at time zero, there is no initial angular displacement as usual for uh, the, the cam. This is going to give us at the end here that the time it should be theta over omega. Remember that omega is going to be constant, right? So this is the time. If we plug this time here, if we substitute this time into this equation, we should end up with this y so we're going to end up with y equals as a function of theta it's going to be the a times theta square over 2 omega right and it should be omega squared because we're going to substitute for t squared so we're going to end up with with omega squared so as you can see we do have y as a function of theta remember that omega is constant the acceleration is constant so y as a function of theta is a quadratic function or it is a parabolic function so that's why we got the name as this type of motion is a parabolic motion that gives a constant acceleration this is the condition right so this is the y as a function of theta this is going to be the first expression and if we decided to blood this is the analytical representation of the displacement of the floor to achieve a constant acceleration and this is the graphical representation during the rise or the return at any point Point. If you just pick any point and plug into this equation, you're going to end up with the displacement as a function of theta, right? So if I ask you to find the acceleration, what should be the acceleration then? We just assume that the acceleration is constant, but we have no clue how much it is, right? So if we are interested in the acceleration, well, let us find the velocity first. The velocity simply is going to be the acceleration times t or let us find the acceleration in the uh, first so from this equation if we did cross multiplication we're going to end up that the acceleration is going to be 2y times omega square over theta square right this is for the acceleration component then this so this is for the acceleration for the velocity simply it's going to be using if you just substitute this a into this equation, we already got the velocity as a times t, and we already got t as a function of theta over omega. So simply substituting here, we're going to end up the v equal the acceleration, which is 2y omega square over theta square times t, which it should be like theta over omega, right? So we're going to cancel this omega with the square. So simply and the theta with this uh, theta square, so we're going to end up with omega over theta. This is going to give us the velocity. So this is like the expression 2, and this is like expression 3, right? So this is for the velocity and the acceleration. So simply, if we, let us talk about the velocity for a while. Like, if we are interested in finding the maximum value of the velocity, how much it is. So... As you can see, the velocity is already as a fun it is function of theta, right? It is already function of theta or the inverse of the theta. So it should give us like kind of linear function because if we substitute y, because we already have y here, if we just replace this one, we're gonna end up with v like a function of theta, a linear function with theta. So, for example, if we are interested in finding, or let us just consider this figure here. So, as you can see, this parabolic function, it has two terms, two parts, basically. Like, like, like already, if we just consider this parabolic function within the rise period, as you can see, it has like a curve that is already open up. And then it has another curve that already open down. Like, this is like, it has U-shape, this curve. It has U-shape looking down, and this curve has another U-shape that already looking up. So it means that these two parabolic functions, they do have different coefficients. Like the coefficient, it would be, if you remember from the mathematic class, this parabolic or quadratic function, 
that it has a theta square, for example, and this one also is gonna have a theta square, but the difference between this one and this one that this coefficient here, it should be negative, but this coefficient here, it should be positive, right? Why this one is open up? In case that it is open up, it means that this acceleration term or this coefficient of the theta square, it should be positive, but if it is already open down, it should be negative. Right, and this is what we're gonna have here. This is already open up, as you can see. This is like U shape that already open up. It means that within this period, we do have acceleration. The acceleration term, as you can see, we already got y as a function. This term, the y as a function of theta square. So all of this term, this coefficient within the first period, it should be positive, and the second period, which is this one, it should be negative. Right. And as we agreed, we're already having here, we're already having here, this omega is constant, right? So the thing that would be changing from positive to negative is only the acceleration. Anyway, this omega, it is a square. So if even if omega is, omega is negative, the term will be positive anyway. But this one, it would be positive and negative depending on the acceleration. So that's why this one is already open up, indicating uh, that the acceleration should be positive, positive acceleration. So having a positive acceleration within this period, positive acceleration, this mean, it means that we do have acceleration. What does it mean, acceleration from dynamics? It means that the velocity of the object is going to increase. Then within the second period, exactly at this point, the velocity of the object is going to decrease because within this second period, the acceleration should be negative, right? It should be negative acceleration in this case indicating that we do have deceleration. Make sense? Someone would say that, okay, in this case, that we're gonna have different accelerations, right? Like we're gonna have change in the acceleration. No, the magnitude of the acceleration is still the same, but the sign or the tendency of the acceleration of from increasing the velocity to decreasing the velocity is going to change. It's going to switch exactly at the middle of this period, right? And this is a very common thing in the parabolic acceleration that we do have a, a, this tell, the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration within this period, this half of the period, because you should understand, as we agreed that this total period it is beta and this total lift it is L, right? So if we just consider half of beta, beta over two, this is just beta over two, let me use another color, another color here. That this is like beta over two, and this is another beta over two on the other side. This is beta over two, and this definitely is gonna be L over two in the middle. So in the midway, this is L2. In the midway of, of this link, we are gonna have switch from acceleration to deceleration or from deceleration to acceleration. But the key difference here is that, is it open up or is it open down? Why? And this makes sense. If we already giving movement to the floor, we are going to increase the velocity, increase the velocity, increase it, increasing. Then we have to decrease. Then we have to decrease the velocity to be because it will proceed to dual here, right? We're going to have dual motion action or event. We're going to end up with a dual event, event here, which is this one. It means that the velocity is going to increase, 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 then it should be continue to decrease to be zero exactly at this point. This is what should be happening, right? Because we're going to end up with a zero velocity for the dual period, right? So, and that's why most of the parabolic motion, they already, we already representing it in this way, okay? So if we consider this switching point here, this midway point, it's theta, equals beta over two and it's y, it's gonna be L over two. So if we substitute it with these two values here for y equals, so at the midway point, at the midway point, y it's gonna be L over two and theta is gonna be beta over two. If we plug this data here, we're gonna end up with the acceleration equals four times L omega square divided by beta square. What is L? This is the total lift. What is beta? This is the total angle period of the rise or the descent of this function, which is the total beta, 
right? So this simply gonna give us the acceleration. And if we decided to plot here, the acceleration, this is the acceleration diagram, the value of this height, the value of this acceleration, this acceleration is gonna be the one that we just calculated down there as four L omega square over beta square, right? And you're gonna have here the same magnitude, but it is negative. Here the acceleration is positive, here the acceleration is gonna be negative. It means that within the first period, we do have acceleration, then we're gonna have deceleration to end up with the zero velocity here, right? So this is for the acceleration, how about the velocity? So the velocity assembly, we're gonna plug here. If I ask you what it should be the maximum velocity then? So as you can see within the first period, the velocity should be increasing till the middle, the midway, then it should be decreasing till zero here. So it should be zero here, right? And there is already zero velocity here, so the maximum should be in the middle. And this is very clear if we try to draw the velocity diagram. We're gonna end up with zero velocity increasing to B maximum, so this is V maximum, right? And then it's going to descend to zero in the double period, then the same thing on the other side. The return, but the it's going to the negative because we already have retaining motion. So we're already moving in the opposite direction. This is just switching in the direction, right? So how much is the maximum? The maximum velocity should be in the midway, right? At the midway. So your objective is just to substitute for L, Y equals L over two and theta equals beta over two within this expression. So we're gonna end up with V maximum. So this is gonna give us at the midway as well, V maximum, the maximum velocity, it should be the two times L over two times omega over beta over two. So this two will be canceled. This is gonna give us another two in the top. So this in total gonna give us two L omega divided by theta. This is gonna give us the maximum velocity, how much it is for this parabolic uh, function. Make sense? This is in case that we do have this one. In some cases, we may have this parabolic function. It is already open up all the way from zero to beta. So it means that all the time we are going to increase the velocity linearly, but there is no decrease in the velocity just before the devil. It means that, so as you can see, we do have increase in the velocity, then decrease to zero. So we're gonna have like smooth transition from high velocity to the dual or the zero velocity, right? But in the previous case, and that's why this one is much more recommended over this type of motion. Why? Because within this one, we're gonna end up with a sudden or a abrupt change in the velocity from high value to zero suddenly. So that's why we end up with a high acceleration. This is gonna result into a huge vibration within the machine, right? But this one, it is much more recommended. We are smoothly increasing the velocity, then decreasing again till zero, right? But in some cases, how about if we are interested in having the parabolic function, it is represented all the way over beta, all the way as acceleration, but there is no deceleration. So like, like for example, how about if we're already interested in, this is gonna be y and this is gonna be theta, and within the, the rise, this is gonna be the rise period. Within the rise period, we are gonna represent the function as parabolic function acceleration only. There is, this is only acceleration or only deceleration. There is no, the switching thing. So as you can see for this case, for example, we are gonna have all the time increase in the velocity. So if we decided to draw the velocity diagram for this parabolic function, we are expecting that this velocity diagram within this same period, right? It should be constant linear function, that it's going linear. And it's gonna be maximum here, right? So there is no switching. So in this case, we're gonna plug y. So in the midway we use, we substitute for y equals l over two and theta equals beta over two for the midway point because we're gonna end up with switching here, right? So how much is the maximum, if we, if we decided to draw the V maximum or the velocity diagram for this quadratic or parabolic function, so simply we need V maximum. V maximum, you're gonna substitute for Y into this expression number three, for Y equals beta, because this is gonna be beta, right? I'm sorry, for theta equals beta, and Y is gonna be the total L. 
But here we substitute for the midway because the maximum there was, was in the middle, right? But here it is already at the end. So if you plugged here V maximum, <coughs> this V maximum is going to be, the Y is going to be 2 L omega over theta. So it's going to be the same value, but it's going to be shifted, right? So as you can see, the maximum velocity, it doesn't depend, it doesn't matter. It's still the same, whatever it is at the only acceleration, only deceleration, because the acceleration, this parabola function it is going to achieve a certain maximum velocity, a certain maximum velocity, a certain value for the same theta and beta and L, right? <coughs> so it is still the same expression for the maximum velocity, but how about the acceleration is gonna be different. The acceleration, if we decided to blot the acceleration to this one, then let me try to draw. So the acceleration, it should be constant all the way from the beginning to the end. So it should be constant acceleration. So let us consider that this green thing, this is the constant acceleration. This is the acceleration diagram. This acceleration, your objective is just to substitute for y into this expression and theta with beta and L. So simply the acceleration is going to be, the y is going to be L, 2L, omega square over beta square. So it's gonna be doubled. The acceleration value will be increasing, will be increasing, and it will be doubled here. But the maximum velocity is still the same. And this makes sense because for this one, if, if there is a dual beyond this one, if there is a dual period beyond this one, so as you can see, we're already increasing the velocity, increasing the velocity till the maximum, then suddenly we're gonna drop to zero. So at this instant, we're gonna end up with a sudden decrease in the acceleration into infinity. Like we're gonna end up with the same infinity thing and the same problem that we already got with the uniform velocity up there. Make sense? But this type of velocity or this type of, of, of type, uh, this type of motion could be considered like linear velocity motion because we can end up with a linear velocity within the rise period or the descent period. It depends. So in this case, we're going to have the parabolic function will be represented over the uh, the rise period, all of it. But here it's going to be switching from uh, right, uh, acceleration to deceleration at the midway. Make sense? So this is for the second type of motion, which is commonly known as the parabolic motion or the constant acceleration motion. Now we're going to move to the third type, which is the simple harmonic motion. From the name, simple harmonic motion, it means that the displacement, it should be a simple harmonic function, right? Harmonic function in general is that it should have the sine, something like omega t or the cosine omega t. All of these are different harmonic functions. So this is the physical meaning or simply what does it mean? The simple harmonic motion. It means that the follower is going to move with and its displacement is going to be described by a harmonic motion. So to explain this thing, this is like a typical shape or diagram of harmonic displacement. And again, as usual, the horizontal axis is going to be the theta and the vertical axis is going to be the y, right? And here we are interested in finding the expression for this harmonic function for the y as a function of theta, the same thing for the velocity and the acceleration diagram. So to do it, let us consider this circle and the basic idea of the harmonic motion that if we just pick a point like this one, and this point is going to rotate over the circle. So as you can see, starting point A starts from this location when beta was zero, or let us consider this angle gamma. So you're not gonna be confused, just use the same uh, symbol that we defined them before. As this is within the rise period, for example, so this is the total beta for the rise period, and this is the total lift, which is L, right? As we use to define these two parameters or two things for uh, this displacement diagram, right? And so if we just consider the movement of point A about a circle, so Initially, let us consider this angle that it is gamma. So initially, when point A was here, at this point, gamma was zero, right? And as we move, and let us just track the, the change in this 
sine gamma, the sine of this angle, and the same thing for the cosine of this angle, gamma, the same angle. So when gamma equals zero, this sine is gonna be zero. When gamma equals zero, the cosine is gonna be one. And as we move, what's gonna to happen to the sine and the cosine? The sine is gonna start, and it starts from zero. Remember that the sine starts from zero. So the sine is going to increase, increase, increase to be maximum at pi over two. When this gamma became 90 degrees, then it's going to decrease again to zero at the one it is, then it's going to increase, but on the other side to when it became like the 270 degrees, which is three pi over, four, uh, over two, then it's gonna be completely zero again when it complete the circle. So as you can see, if we decided to draw a curve for this sign is going to start from zero, increase, then decrease, then zero again, and so on. But how about the cosine? The cosine starts from zero, uh, from one, and decrease to zero, then it switch to the negative one, then zero, then one, and keep going, and so on. So this is, it means that as we complete a circle, we're gonna have increase and decrease. So, as you can see, this y, it should be described using a harmonic function. It should be described either the sine or the cosine. It doesn't matter, but as you can see, you're gonna find that this sign changes from zero to one. So its minimum value is zero when, so the sine of gamma, it is zero when gamma equals zero and it is one when gamma equals pi over two. You got my point? And the same thing for the cosine. The cosine gamma, it becomes when gamma equals zero, it is, or simply it is changes from zero to one and it's gonna be zero when gamma equals pi over two, and it's gonna be one when uh, gamma equals zero, for example. If we completed the circle, so we're gonna change from zero to one. So as you can see, if we have a look to this displacement diagram, like we would like to increase the displacement, or why? From zero to maximum, but we're gonna repeat the same down again. Like if we draw the, the sine function, when we draw the sine function, we used to jump up, increase, increase, till maximum value, then we are going to decrease again till the zero, then we're gonna switch the direction and repeat the cycle. The same thing for the cosine. The cosine will start from maximum and decrease to zero, then we switch the opposite direction and so on. So this is what we usually do for just sine and just cosine. But here for this y, this is like, this y, this is like half of, this is quarter of the sine wave. To complete the sine wave, we're gonna start from zero and increase to till the maximum, then we have to decrease and continue the sine wave. No, we won't gonna complete the sine wave. So to do it basically, we have to seek the changes of this angle gamma over half a circuit. Or in other words, over this quarter of a circuit because we won't gonna complete a complete cycle. This is just one quarter of the cycle, we're just gonna increase from zero to maximum and that's it. There is no descent or there is no other variation, right? As already given here in this diagram. So what does it mean? This it means that we have to trace the changes of this angle gamma between zero and pi over two over the quarter of the circle, which is from zero to pi over two or from zero to 90 degree. Make sense? So the objective now is just to separate this y, which is the rise or the height or the displacement of the follower as a function of gamma. So as we mentioned, when gamma equals zero at this point, this should be the point A, then this is when it is already gamma. So it means that this point, if you just draw a horizontal line going to the right, just this horizontal line, it should give us like a specific y value, right? A corresponding y value for the follower, right? With this height, it should be y, as already written up there, right? So we are interested in finding this y value, how much it is, in terms of gamma, the angle gamma. So to do so, let me pick this color, so y. And this height definitely, this height, this height it should be L over two. What is L again? This is the total lift because the total lift here is already L. Right? Where this point, from this point, which it should belong to this point, 
it should be in the middle of L over 2, right? So this is L over 2, and we are interested in this Y, and this angle is gamma. So what should be this height? This height is going to be definitely from the trigonometry of this shape, L over 2, the cosine of gamma angle. So from here, we can define as Y as the difference between L over 2, L over 2, negative L over 2, the cosine of gamma. So definitely we're going to say that y equals L over 2 times 1 negative the cosine of gamma angle. Make sense? So now we got y as a function of this angle gamma, but we are not interested in this expression. We are not interested in this gamma. We are interested in theta. We would like to exhibit this y as a function of theta, not gamma. So the idea right now, or the objective right now, just to find gamma in terms of theta, how much, how gamma would be related to theta. To do so, let us investigate three parameters here that we're already considering. The, the angle theta and how it would affect the y value and the, its corresponding theta value. So initially, when gamma, it should be zero. Gamma equals zero, it means that we're already at this point, y it should be zero, right? If you just move horizontal, y it should be zero from this point. So y it should be zero. And why it should be zero when theta, it should be zero. Make sense? How about, for example, then how about the, when gamma equals pi, when gamma equals pi for this expression. When gamma equals pi, this is gonna give us the cosine of pi equals neg negative one. So negative times negative gives positive. So this is gonna give us in total, Two will be cancelled with the two to give us y equals L. And y will equal to L when y is maximum, right? This is the maximum value of y, which should be L. So when gamma equals y, y is going to be L. And this definitely should be when theta equals beta, right? It means that y is going to attain a value of L, which is the left, when theta equals beta, right? So... As you can see, there is like some kind of relation, like when gamma equals zero, theta should be zero. When gamma equals pi, theta should be beta. And when gamma should be gamma, the theta should be just theta, right? And the y should be just y. So from this two expression, from these two relation, this one and this one, we can do like cross multiplication to end up with gamma in terms of theta. Like you're gonna do the multiplication of theta times pi divided by beta. This is gonna give us how much is gamma. So from this relations, these different relations that we just investigated, we're gonna conclude that theta times pi or pi times theta divided by beta, this is gonna give us the gamma. Then plug this gamma into the previous equation, just substitute into y here. So we're gonna end up with y at the end, y will be L over two, the one negative, the cosine of gamma will be substituted with the theta over beta, this one. Then if I ask you, so this is simply the y as a function of theta. If you plot this, this function, we're going to end up with this curve. We can use this equation, plug it into MATLAB, we're going to end up with this curve. Whatever in the, uh, the rise or the descent, we're just going to switch some signs here, right? But how about the velocity? The velocity should be the time derivative of y with respect to t, right? So if we did time derivative to this one, L, it should be constant. This is the left. The derivative of one simply is, is gonna be zero. The, the derivative of the cosine function gives the negative sign, so this negative will be cancelled. So we're gonna end up with the sine of the angle, which is pi theta uh, divided by beta, times the derivative of this one with respect to the time. Pi, it is constant. Beta, it is constant. D theta by dt. Because the only thing that is going to change over time is the angle of rotation, the angular displacement of the cam itself. This is the rotational angle of the cam. So this term, d theta by dt, gives us omega, which is the angular velocity of the cam. So substitute with this one as omega. So this is going to give us at the end the velocity as L over 2, right? There is two in the denominator. Then there is in the, in the uh, top here, uh, pi and d theta by dt gives omega by beta, right? Sine pi theta over pi. So this is gonna give us another function of how the velocity is going to change as a function of the rotational angle of the cam. 
right, itself. So it's simply, if we already were, this omega should be the angular velocity of the cam, this beta, which is this total angle of, of the rise period, and this is the le total left of the cam, if you substitute these values and you change theta, you're gonna end up with a plot of a curve of the velocity. So this curve shows how the velocity is going to change and this velocity is gonna be maximum. So this is the V maximum. So how much is V maximum? We can simply find the maximum of this value. Any simple harmonic function to be maximum, this sign term, it should be one. So if we substitute this one, this should be one. It means that this condition is that pi theta over beta. It should equal to how much to give sine something equals one. This should equal to pi over two. So if you cancel the pi with the pi, this is gonna give us that this theta when theta equals beta over two, this velocity should be maximum. And that's why in the middle, as you can see, this maximum velocity is already in the middle of this span, of this time period, right? Or this angle period, this is the beta. So at beta over two, this velocity should be maximum. How much is this maximum value? This maximum V maximum is gonna be just this term, it will be one, so it will be L pi times omega over two beta. This is gonna give us the maximum velocity of the simple harmonic motion. How about the acceleration? The acceleration is gonna be the time derivative of V with respect to the time or dV by dt. It's gonna give us this L pi omega divided by two beta is constant. The derivative of the cosine give, the sine gives the cosine of the same angle, which is pi theta over beta, d the pi, there is another pi, the derivative of this one, pi over beta, d theta by dt, right? And this term again gives omega, so this is gonna give us omega squared. Remember that when we did time derivative, Omega is a constant velocity. It means that these equations under the condition that the cam rotates at a constant velocity. And this is the thing that we agreed that it is preferred in terms of the practical use of these machines. So this is gonna give us at the end, the acceleration equals to the L pi square. There is omega here because there is pi square, omega will be omega squared and two, Peta square in the denominator, the cosine of pi theta over beta, right? This is gonna give us the acceleration. If we plot this one using MATLAB, for example, we're gonna end up with a curve like this one. As you can see, when beta over two, at beta, when theta equals beta over two, this acceleration is gonna be zero. The acceleration is gonna be zero, but it's gonna be maximum at either beta or theta equals zero or theta equals beta. Right, so this maximum, to have this term maximum, to find the maximum acceleration, there is a condition here that pi theta over beta, it should equal to pi, because we need this term, or it should equal to zero or, pi, or beta, zero or pi and so on, right? So when this term equals zero, this is gonna give us cosine zero equals one, it means that this is gonna be the maximum acceleration and also, if this one is equals pi, this is gonna give us negative one, and that's why we go, we're gonna end up here with a positive acceleration when beta equals zero, when theta equals zero, when theta equals beta, this is gonna give us the uh, the negative acceleration, as I'm gonna show you. So simply, this, it means that we're gonna have two values for theta. If it is zero, so theta should be zero. If it is pi, this pi will be canceled with this pi, right? So we're gonna end up that theta should equal to beta. So it means that the maximum acceleration, we're gonna attain the maximum acceleration, value for the, for the acceleration when theta equals zero and theta equals pi. But if we substitute for theta equals pi here, this is gonna give us cosine pi, which is gonna be negative one. So that's why the accident should be negative. So what does it mean negative? It means that initially within this range, we don't have an increase in the velocity till the maximum. So that's why we don't have and acceleration, increasing the velocity. Then it's going to switch. It's gonna be zero at the maximum velocity. Then it's going to switch to be negative. Acceleration indicating deceleration. Deceleration, it means that we're gonna end up with a decrease in the velocity till the zero because this is the dual period, right? It means that the simple harmonic motion, it is preferred. It gives us more transition from the highest value of the velocity to the zero value. It won't gonna give us the infinity acceleration as we end up in the previous, in the first case of the uniform velocity, right?
So it is preferred in this case. And for this one, the maximum acceleration, A maximum, it should be just this term because this term definitely is going to be one. So it's going to be L pi squared, peta squared, or omega squared, omega squared divided by the two peta squared. This is going to give us the maximum acceleration. Make sense? So this is for this third type of motion. The fourth one is the cyclical motion. So for this cyclical motion, it is looks like you're already achieving a simple harmonic function, but for the velocity, not for the displacement. What we did here for the simple harmonic motion, that we started by assuming this simple harmonic function for this one for the displacement. Then we drive this one to end up with the velocity and the acceleration. We're going to have another similar one to this expression, but for the velocity, not for the displacement. This is going to be like the difference, the main difference between the, or simply how we can un understand this cyclical motion. So it is type of the motion, like the simple harmonic or the uniform acceleration or the parabolic motion. But this one, it, as I mentioned, that it depends mainly on assuming a simple harmonic function, but for the velocity, not for the displacement itself. So I won't gonna go deeply how we can drive this assumed function as we did for the simple harmonic motion, but I'm gonna start from this equation directly and don't bother yourself how did we drive this one. So why it is L over, or let's say it's gonna be like L times theta over beta, negative the L over two pi times the sine of the two pi theta divided by beta. Where again, the beta, it should be this time period. All of this time period, this is the total time period or angle period. This is the total angle that needed to lift the right, the follower from the zero to the maximum left. So this L, it should be the left or the maximum Y. This is the L and this definitely should be the Y, like this is the theta axis and this is the Y axis. Right, so this is why as a function of theta, as you can see, L, this is the left beta, it is just the period, the angle period, and this is some pi's and in addition to the, the angle theta. So this is for the displacement. To find the velocity assembly is gonna be the time derivative of y dy by dt. So L is constant, beta is constant, Theta, it should be d theta by dt because it is time dependent, right? Theta, this is the angular displacement again of the cam and it should be time dependent because the displacement is going to rotate with a constant velocity as usual. So this term, it should give us the omega, d theta by dt. This is the omega, the angular pressure of the cam. Negative, L over two pi, just constant. The derivative of sine gives the cosine of the two pi theta divided by beta. This times the derivative of what inside this angle, which is two pi over beta times d theta by dt, right? d theta by dt, again, this is the omega, so we're gonna consider that v equals l times omega over pi, this is the first term, negative, the l times omega, there is two pi, this two pi will be canceled with this two pi, so we're gonna end up with here, like times omega over pi as well, but times the cosine of two pi theta over beta. So as you can see, we're gonna end up with this simple harmonic function for the velocity. Let me write this one very similar to the simple harmonic function that we wrote for the displacement up there. When, by considering this L omega beta as common factor, so we're gonna end up with the cosine two pi theta over beta, right? So if you just consider this V, this is the velocity, this velocity term, if you just compare it to this term here, it is the same one, right? It is, there is constant one negative cosine. So this is simple harmonic function for the displacement. We end up with a very similar, simple harmonic function, but for the velocity, this is the big difference between the circular motion and the simple harmonic motion. So if I ask you how much is the maximum velocity then, the V maximum for this case, V maximum we're gonna obtain it when this term it should be two, when th this term it should be pi, so this is gonna give us like 
po, uh, this is going to give us negative 1. Negative times negative gives positive. So this term will be 2. This is going to be the maximum. So the maximum velocity will be 2 times L omega over beta. This is the maximum that already happens when theta equals pi beta over 2. You can even prove these things as we did with the simple harmonic motion. So this is the maximum velocity that should be taking place at the pi over 2. It is already taking place in the middle here. This is all the way. This is pi, right? And it's going to be maximum increasing, increasing. Then it will attain maximum at pi over 2. Then it's going to decrease. It means that for the acceleration, we are expecting the acceleration to be in this way. Like increasing and B0 at the middle, at the maximum velocity, then it's going to be negative. So with the, we should have acceleration period and we should have the second period as deceleration. And this is what we're going to prove right now. So for the acceleration, it should be L omega, or it should be the time derivative of V with respect to the time equals the L omega over beta. Again, omega is a constant velocity, so just a constant value. The derivative of 1 is just 0. The cosine gives negative sign, so this is going to give us the sign of the 2 pi theta over beta time the 2 pi over beta but d theta by dt. And again, d theta by dt, this is the omega, which is the angular velocity of this uh, mechanism or this cap. So this at the end is going to give us the acceleration equals the, this is going to be d omega, this is going to be l times 2 pi, there is like 2 pi, and yeah, 2 pi L omega square over beta square, right? Because there is beta 2 pi L omega square times the sine of 2 pi theta over beta, right? And so this is for the acceleration. If we just, again, plot this equation into MATLAB, we're going to end up with this curve for the acceleration. So simply, this acceleration is going to be maximum. It's maximum value when this term equals 1. So it will be 2 pi times L omega square over theta square. This is the maximum acceleration. And this should take place when theta equals, theta equals beta over 4. If you, as you can see, when the quarter, when theta, beta, this should be like beta over 2. Here it is beta over 4, right? At beta over 4, it's going to be maximum, then it's going to be decreasing to 0, and it's going to switch to P negative on the other side. So these are the characteristics of the, in terms of the displacement velocity and acceleration of the circular motion. So what we discussed here, we discussed four different types of motions. We discussed the uniform velocity motion that gives constant velocity, then we discussed the constant acceleration motion, which the parabolic one, then we discussed the circular and the uh, and the simple harmonic motion. Both they give changes in the velocity, the displacement, and the acceleration. But the key difference between the simple harmonic function and or motion and the circular one that the in the simple harmonic motion we are achieving or assuming a simple harmonic function for the displacement field, but for the velocity, we are assuming the simple harmonic function for the velocity. This is in the circular motion. Make sense? First type of motion that we're going to discuss is the modifying uniform velocity motion. This one is uniform velocity motion, but it is modified one. To get rid of the difficulty or the problem with the uniform motion, if we, let me just go up very quick. Just to remind you with this, yeah, here. Yes, with the uniform velocity motion, we said that we're going to end up, if we're just increasing with linear displacement, we're going to have the velocity, it is constant, but the acceleration is going to be zero. This is going to give us into, is going to lead to inf infinite acceleration when we try to change from the, because of the sudden change in the velocity from maximum value to just zero value suddenly at the dual, especially given that we do have dual between, dual period between, uh, between uh, or beyond or after the uniform motion. So this is one of the serious problem of this mechanism. And we said that this will result in a huge inertia force or, and which will definitely, it would impact the follower or especially the follower, because this is the initial force for the follower itself and probably the flow would break down or failure or, uh, or fail as a mechanical component or even at least it's going to result in huge vibration in the machine. 
So to get rid of this problem, we can give like a little bit curve feature or curve or fillet just before the the dual period. Like this is the dual period and this is another dual period. So we're gonna do like, so the main function itself is gonna be this one. This is the linear displacement, which will give a constant velocity here. The velocity within this period is gonna be, this is, no, this is the displacement. The velocity is gonna be within this period as already given here from there, this point to this point, it will be linear. Then we're gonna combine a little bit curvature here and another curvature for the displacement to give a linear function. So we're gonna have like, you could say that we already increasing the velocity to the maximum, then it's going to smoothly decrease till the zero one more time. So this abrupt change, it had been removed. It means that we won't gonna have an infinite acceleration. The acceleration with this period in the middle is gonna be zero, but within these two periods, the acceleration will be with a specific value. There is acceleration, yes. It means that there is kind of vibration that it would result in the follower, yes, there is, but it is not that much huge like the previous case or the original case of the uniform acceleration. So we're gonna end up with some accelerations here. The same thing in the return period, we're gonna have this one is curved, this period is curved, and the thing in the mirror is gonna be straight. So you just combining some other functions at the end, this function in many of the cases is gonna be parabolic function to give linear displacement. We said that the parabolic gives a linear displacement. So we combine the function in the middle, the function in the middle is gonna be uniform. It is looks like you already doing three functions. One in the middle is uniform, and this one is gonna be parabolic with an acceleration. Here it is open up, and this one is already open down. So we're gonna have here deceleration, and here we're gonna have acceleration period, right? To get rid of the infinite acceleration thing that we already discussed up there. So these are the different types of motion that should be executed by the follower and you know, like the, the key idea that you will be given these descriptions in terms of force, written descriptions of these different types of motion, like I'm gonna let you know that during the rise, it should be the rising with a simple harmonic motion, then it's gonna do it for a while, then it's gonna return for with any other type of motion. Then your objective is just to represent these or translate these uh, written descriptions into graph. Then once you drive the graph, we can we, <coughs> we can uh, can come come up with the profile of the cam or the shape of the cam. This is what we're gonna do over the next videos, and that's it for this video. So the objective today was just to introduce to you what does it mean cam, the main mechanism, how it works, the main component of this mechanism, the different types of the mechanism, their classification, the different events to know the difference between rise, return, and also the different types of the of the motion that should be executed by the by the follower and how the their description in terms of displacement velocity and acceleration component and how we can represent them. This is what we already discussed over this part. The next video we're gonna I'm gonna show you how we can draw uh, graphically represent every one of these each one of these uh, different uh, follower motion that we discussed today. Thank you and see you in the next video.